Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Fairy Talk. My name is Nick. How are you guys all doing today? I wish I could say I was doing well. I was, I was sick about a week, week and a half ago, and I, th I thought I was over it, but it came back, and it came back like tenfold. Right now, my, my throat feels like it's on fire, and if I can go without hacking up a lung throughout this, this whole video, I'll be pretty happy about that. But now that I got that out of the way, um, let's get into it because I got, I got a, quite a few things I want to cover and I don't want to go too, too long. But uh, just the other day I did a, um, a live event on YouTube. What would you guys think of that? Did you guys, did, well first off, did you get to, to, to see any of it? Um, the live portion ended up going a little bit over seven hours. First time I ever did anything like that and I was just having fun. People were popping in the room, popping out and you know questions and just basic shop talk. And I don't know, that might be something I have to do again. If you guys were able to catch some of it, what, what, let me know in the comments section. What, you know, was it a good thing, bad thing, indifferent, eh, could care less, whatever. Or it's the best thing you've ever seen in your entire life. Well, probably not that. But anyways, um, yeah, that was, that was interesting. That was, that was kind of fun. Um, let me get into some other stuff. Last week I made that, that sandpaper cabinet. And uh, I had a lot of questions. Uh, the, one of the questions I got over and over again was what type of wood did I use? And it, it's a plywood, but I'm guessing they're calling it solid core plywood. I have never used it before, and my um, my local supplier, um, not that I normally go to, uh, it's not my plywood supplier that I normally go to, but it was uh, later on a Sunday, and I, I needed some place that was open. And this was the normal thickness and the normal veneer, but it, rather than having anywhere from 7 to, say, 12 layers, it was... Uh, it was solid core. It uh, it worked out all right. There was, eh, of course, this sample piece not not too many, but there were some bug holes and stuff. And I had I, a lot of people that asked me, does it warp? Does it stay stable? I don't know. It was the first time I ever used it. Uh, I'd have to let you know in a few months. Um, yeah, it's it, I it, you know I figured I'd give it a shot. I saw it there. The other stuff um, for the face that uh, they had available. Just uh, wasn't to my liking. We'll just put it that way. So I was kind of uh, essentially duped into trying it. I had to. There was I had no other options. But it did cut fairly decent. Um, there were still a few voids here and there. Um, I don't know. I, I guess I'm 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 on the fence yet about that. Also, um, Jeremy McMahon came up with a really awesome idea in the comments section of that video. And he said to put uh, white melamine edge banding, whether it's a self-adhesive kind or the iron-on kind, on one of the edges of that sandpaper cabinet. And that way, with an indelible marker, you can just write whatever grit sandpaper it is for each particular slot. And if it changes, you know, you can just use some mineral spirits or lacquer thinner or whatever to wipe off the marker and then just, you know, write back in. So that is an awesome idea. It would have been something I would have loved to do while it was still disassembled at the table saw. And I would have even taken into account, I would have ed edge banded it and then ripped it to final width so it would match the other side. And um, that way when I was cutting out all the dados for all the shelves, um, it would be cutting that out as well. But uh, no, that was a really awesome idea and I wanted to thank Jeremy for that because, you, know, you know, that was just cool to see. And I'm like, you know what, darn, that would be really um, good for organizing. Also, I had a lot of questions on, excuse me, like I said, I'm feeling under the weather. On these clamps, I had a um, stop block for when, when I'm, say, I'm using, you know, like my miter gauge and my, my table saw fence. And you don't like to, and when you're doing through cuts, use both those because then you're trapping that piece between the rip, the rip fence and uh, the blade. And you're just pretty much asking for kickback. But... If you put a block of wood, you know, it's, it's pretty common to see this, but if you clamp a block of wood to your fence, that way once you're past the little block of wood, there's room for that material to go in, instead of getting trapped between the blade. But I did get asked uh, quite a bit on these clamps, and I will leave a link in the description below where you can get these on Amazon, but um, they're just kind of some cheap, um, you know, I guess C-clamps. You drill a hole in whatever your, your fixture is, and the clamp then fits inside of it, and then there's a nice you know, a soft grip, you know, felt pad here that you can clamp that to your fence. I use it not only for my block, and of course I have it labeled, this is my table saw fence stop block, um, but I also have it on an auxiliary fence for when I do rabbit cuts with my, with my dado stack. 
I can bury the dado stack in that auxiliary fence. And then I, you know, these come in a two pack. So then I put two on that auxiliary fence. And that seems to work out really great. Um, let's see, I gotta run down my list here. Oh, and then the, the reason behind, now I'm jumping all back and forth. The reason for that live show is Twitter came out with a new app or a new platform called Periscope. And it's a way to uh, broadcast live of what you're doing. And I was in the middle of restoring a hand plane. And uh, this is going to be my hopefully my next build video. And I got it all sandblasted and, and all that stuff. But I was just sitting there essentially polishing and sanding parts. And it was just laborious, just monotonous. You know, I'm just sitting there, you know... Um, you know, going at it, and uh, I'm like, you know, this would be the perfect time to, you know, anyone that wants to, you know, hop in and see what I'm doing, they can just hop in live and, and see, and, uh, but I could not for the life of me figure out how that Periscope thing worked, and I'm sure it's easy as can be, but apparently not for me, so I just went on to, uh, I asked Cremona, I said, you know, how do you, you know, you've done the live show, how do you do that, and that, that was easy enough, so who knows if I'll ever do those again, it was kind of fun, maybe, we'll see. Um, I was actually just coming back from, uh, um, sh out shopping with my wife and I ran into one of my viewers, um, and, uh, I thought that was really cool. And, uh, Jim had sent me this picture here because when I was out, I had, uh, one of my nickfairy.com stickers. And so I gave him that and he thought that was kind of cool. So it was nice meeting you, Jim. And, uh, anyone that were to ever see me out, you know, just, yeah, say hi, you know, talk shop. He was showing me some pictures of, uh, some, an end table, but then also like a TV stand that he did. It was kind of green and green-esque and uh, some uh, kind of tapered flutes in the legs and some walnut pegs and stuff like that. It was really cool to uh, to talk to Jim. So it was nice meeting you. Um, what else? Did I nail it all? Oh, pretty much, yeah. I got pretty much it all. Like I said, I'm restoring this hand plane. I was at my plywood supplier, and they also sell used tools. And it, it, it really runs the gamut of... Uh, you know, whether they got used saws, they have a lot of uh, older stuff, they have some newer stuff. And I saw this plane sitting there for like 14 or 15 bucks. And uh, I thought, you know what, I will, I will give my, my shot at it. I don't think I've restored a hand plane before. I, I, I might have when I was like 13, 14 years old, and it would have been an old block plane of my dad's. But I can't remember because I looked for that plane the other day and I couldn't find it. So that, that kind of stinks. But uh, got it all sandblasted. Um... Got uh, got the frog off. I was I was super glad to see all the fasteners came off with without a hitch. So that was really kind of neat to see. And uh, I kind of tested that out in the store a little bit because it was sitting next to some screwdrivers. I just wanted to make sure everything was loose because, you know, if you break off a fastener, that's that's never any fun. But anyways, um, I'm going to shoot the the inside here black. I have been working on flattening the bottom. Like I said, this will be my next project video. And uh, look forward to that because there's a few brass parts on here that um, anyone that's polished metal before knows that when you polish up some brass, you can go from pretty dingy, uh, pretty dingy looking to super shiny real quick. So let me run down my list here. I think that's about all I have for you for this week. So until I see you guys next time, take care.